Hello, dear friends. Today's podcast is with Joël Hansel. Joël is a philosopher. She lives in Jerusalem. Originally, she's from France, and uh, she where she did her studies. And she is well known for her work on Emmanuel Levinas. Uh, Joël has studied Levinas for many years, has been involved in the publication of research articles on Levinas and for translations of Levinas into Hebrew. So we've known each other for a long time and we're going to talk today about her work and about the philosopher Emmanuel Levinas. I hope you enjoy it. Good day, dear friends. Welcome to our podcast. And today we have um, a guest from Jerusalem. We will be speaking with Joël Hansel, who is a philosopher and has worked on um, philosophy of uh, the 20th century, worked on the writings of Vladimir Yankilevich, of Emmanuel Levinas, and well, we'll let uh, Joël tell you about this herself. But first of all, I'd like to say, hello Joël, thank you for being here. We're very happy to have you in our podcast. Yeah, thank you, uh, Andrews and uh, Darius, your son. Um, I'm very happy too, and it's a great uh, honor to be with you. Thanks. Okay. So let's start now. Perhaps we'll, we'll start, and uh, I'll ask you to talk about yourself a little bit. Where are you from? Where did you do your studies? I already said that you worked on Levinas. How did you, you know, come to Levinas and so on? And you live in Jerusalem now. So maybe just talk about yourself and how did all of this come about? Okay. So uh, I, I was educated in France. I'm from uh, Paris originally. And uh, I, I, uh, I got my degrees at uh, La Sorbonne and at uh, an institution who is uh, uh, very prestigious, uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure. And so uh, philosophy is my field. Uh, and, but I, I was also very interested I, uh, I, as a Jew. Uh, to, to work, to know, to study our uh, Jewish heritage. So I, I learned Hebrew as a, at a very young age. And uh, when, I, when I decided which field I would uh, find uh, suitable for me, I decided to work on uh, Kabbalah. So uh, my, my background is really a general, what is called general philosophy, continental philosophy, uh, but I, I first, uh, I, I wrote my uh, PhD uh, on the relationship between Kabbalah and philosophy. And then I, I always read Levinas, yes, it's, it was uh, from the age of uh, 18 years old. But I, I started to write uh, about Levinas at the beginning of, uh, of the 90s. So, uh, tell us a little bit for our listeners, what exactly is the Kabbal and, uh, or Kabbalah? Or in English, sometimes we say Kabbal, but I've seen Kabbalah as well, written both ways. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, is, uh, what is it exactly, the Kabbal, and uh, what, when does it date from? Okay, so I, I would try to make it uh, short. So, uh, Kabbalah is uh, the science of the divine. And the divine is not, uh, it's not about knowing who is God and, uh, and uh, knowing about the mystery of his uh, essence. And it's not even to talk about God. It's to, it's to, Kabbalah is about uh, the relationship and all the, all the aspects, various aspects of the relationship that exist uh, between uh, the divinity and the world. And these relationships are all sorts of value, you know, like, uh, like um, mercy, like uh, justice, uh, uh, and so and other moral values. And uh, the modern studies of Kabbalah started, uh, especially with uh, Gershom Sholem, who was uh, really is a great reference in the field. And as a, as a philosopher, I, I was very interested by the thought, Kabbal, the thought, yeah, Kabbalist thought, and mm -hmm. what the relationship with other aspects of Jewish thought and with uh, a general philosophy, which subject to about all sorts of subjects. So it, it was my, my interest, but since I 
I, when I studied philosophy, I did it uh, really systematically, uh, starting with uh, Presocratics, uh, Plato, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I dedicated to, to, to it uh, many, many years. <laughs> and uh, I felt I could not uh, achieve uh, the, same, uh, the same things with uh, Kabbalah. So I, I decided that I should, uh, I should, um, I should work uh, on philosophy, concentrate, focus on philosophy, a proper. And, yeah. Just another question about the about the Kabbalah is: Are there um, you talked about values and so on? Are there sources of Greek philosophy in the Kabbalah, or is it more Old Testament sources? Where do the Kabbalistic oh. authors draw their? Mm. In fact, uh, Kabbalah is. Uh, is the commentary, the commentary on the Bible. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, all the Kabbalists were uh, really uh, uh, Talmudists. Yeah. Talmud. Nobody, okay. right. nobody right. dealt with Kabbalah without this uh, traditional and, uh, and, uh, and uh, systematical Jewish back background. Background, right. And, yeah, yeah, so, and, and of course there are influences, like especially uh, Neoplatonism, but mm -hmm. in fact, it's really um, I call it uh, the uh, the Jewish the Jewish reflection on the Judaism, yeah, or Jewish idea of Judaism. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was a mystical uh, writing, but it must be like rational too. It's not just is it more poetic or is it also like rash, rational? As are many Kabbalists, so it depends uh, on who we are talking about. Mm -hmm. But my, uh, and nobody would agree with me in the field of Kabbalah, starting with Yashom Sholem, okay. who defined Kabbalah as Jewish mysticism. Mm -hmm. But I, I uh, um, and it's not also uh, rationalism uh, in the uh, meaning we would apply a rationalist uh, frame uh, of thought uh, to Kabbalah, an external uh, frame of thought. I, 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 my view is that there is an authentic thought, and uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, belongs to Kabbalah. It's um, special, it's special to Kabbalah, and and uh, and we have to uncover it. Yeah, it's not like, uh, of course, I, I relate it to Kabbalah as, uh, as uh, coming from philosophy, but uh, I think there is an original system of Jewish thought. So you said that after you after your studies in on the uh, Kabbalah, you then went over to sort of mainstream philosophy. And w is there a field in philosophy that you concentrated on? Would it be phenomenology, or would it be, uh, you know, like what what part of philosophy what part of philosophy interested you then after? Uh, many, many, many philosophers and many uh, uh, streams of uh, of thought. Uh, of course, but I um, I uh, I started really with Levinas and uh, Vladimir Jankelevich, who is, mm -hmm. uh, despite of his Russian name, is uh, really a French philosopher, major French philosopher, mm -hmm. and I was always very interested, very uh, concerned by ethics. So that's one of the main okay. reasons I <laughs> I got to to to, uh, to work on Levinas, and I I really. Um, I'm working uh, more generally on uh, uh, 20th century French philosophy. And I mean, like uh, Henri Bergson, yes, who mm -hmm. is uh, one mm -hmm. of the greatest. Uh, phenomenology, of course. Of course, I would not say I'm a scholar. I'm a phenomenology scholar. But uh, whoever uh, works on Levinas has to work on uh, phenomenology. Mm -hmm. So I, I also uh, worked on it, yeah. So after your um, after your studies and uh, how is it that you came to live uh, being from France you, uh, from Paris how is it that you came to live in Israel in Jerusalem? Yeah, so I'm living in Israel for Jerusalem for uh, more than thirty years. Thirty years and uh, thirty years, yes, <laughs> yeah, long time. But I. Uh, I remain very French, I, except for, of course, uh, we know why. I, I will not mention it. Uh, for the last uh, one, one and a half year, I, I did not uh, travel to Paris, but I'm very uh, 
um, I, my, my uh, link to French culture has remained very strong, but I, I uh, 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 Judaism is not, uh, is not uh, only or not even a religion. I mean, there is this dimension uh, of uh, Jewish people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, starts, it starts in the Bible, of course. Mm. And, uh, and so uh, um, one of the main reasons is that uh, I, I believe that being Jew is, uh, it, and to achieve uh, my Jewishness is to belong to a people. And the people need um, to have, to have uh, an independent state, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with all the institutions uh, that that belongs to a uh, modern modern um, modern uh, state, I relate to Judaism, and I think that Judaism is not only uh, or not uh, not essentially or maybe not at all uh, religion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, a set of uh, of beliefs, a set of practices. I think. Uh, a Jewishness, being a Jew, is belonging to a people, mm -hmm. and this is a thing that, that, of course, you cannot really achieve when uh, when you live in France as a minority, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's something it's it's really a natural uh, consequence of uh, being a Jew. Mm -hmm. And so be, being a member of a people and the very existence of a, of a people uh, is uh, having an independent uh, state uh, with all the insti institutions that would allow uh, the Jewish people to achieve its uh, vocation. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and uh, at the territory, I mean, a modern state cannot, cannot uh, exist without uh, territory. Mm -hmm. So... It's one of the main reasons. There are many more, more of them. It's uh, mm. maybe also the light of uh, Jerusalem, the beauty of the city. There is. Uh, it doesn't matter if you, uh, whatever your uh, religion or your beliefs are, and whatever uh, uh, you are. But uh, I think it's uh, something that is uh, uh, that it's uh, really striking. So it's also some, uh, something I cannot really explain uh, rationally. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. I think you have to come and to feel it. Yeah, and you have no regrets. You uh, you are happy with your choice and yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and no, I I never really left uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we speak French at home and uh, and but I I really be believe that I had something to do here that I could not achieve um, outside of Israel, and it's mm -hmm. uh, linked also to uh, Levinas. So it gave you a sense of mission, I suppose, in your life. Living there in Jerusalem, you have, like, at the same time, a sense of mission. It's giving purpose to your life. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, generally, yes, but I, I, I came here uh, to, contrib to contribute. To contribute, okay. not only to, to contribute, to to bring my my modest, uh, my lit, my small mm -hmm. contribution, and it's really linked to uh, Levinas, uh, because mm -hmm. I'm very involved in uh, translating Levinas into Hebrew. I'm not a translator. I work. I work with a translator. Mm -hmm. Here, here, one of the books <laughs> we uh, we. Um, we worked on it's uh, on, on uh, and we have also a uh, totality and infinity here main uh, major major Levinas's books with a uh, Rothko uh, Mark Rothko's painting and I I, I was I was uh, the initiator uh, uh, and the ed 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 uh, scientific editor of of these books and first of all. Um, a thinker, whatever his field, cannot become a, a part of a culture if he's not translated. I mean, if Israelis uh, would read Lev Levinas as, as they do, as we do, we did at the university for a very, very long time in uh, French or in English, 
So it's not a, it's a, it does not become a part of the culture. The, the people have to read it in their own uh, language. And suddenly, a, I mean, maybe it's big, it's, it's, a, it's something bigger, bigger than uh, me, I, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and this, is a, this is a fact, of course, of, of a, this is a fact. Uh, Levinas has, uh, has been, uh, I, I mean, scholarship on Levinas, it's, very, it's quite recent. Yes, it's the last 25 years. In Israel. It mm -hmm. In Israel, yeah. It, I mean, I think that Hebrew was uh, one of the last uh, languages. Uh, Levinas is translated in more, uh, I think, maybe 30 languages, including uh, uh, Chinese, Japanese, I don't know, maybe Lithuanian. And uh, and so uh, there is a there, it took time it took time but once uh, Levinas started to be translated he became he, he uh, we just uh, we just uh, saw a phenomenon that I think is is unique and does not does not happen with Levinas in France that it's really a sociological phenomenon because our Israeli society. Is quite uh, divided. I mean, it doesn't mean that we 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 um, cannot get along one with the other. But there are uh, the, the ultra orthodox Jews, <laughs> the orthodox Jews. Uh, I mean, the national uh, Jewish uh, national uh, religious uh, Jews and people who are completely uh, secular. Yeah? And so, uh, and also Jews and Arabs and uh, Druze and many min other minorities. So um, I think that really um, it, it turned to be a, f a sociological phenomenon that Levinas is uh, widely read in, in Israel and it is read in ev each one of these circle, the circles I mentioned. Uh, one of the first people who wrote on him, he was very secular. He was uh, he, he, he lived in a kibbutz. Uh, he was affiliated to a Zionist socialist uh, trend, and uh, and someone someone other other people who studied him and wrote about him. Uh, they are really uh, ultra orthodox, and uh, and so I think that. Uh, um, even if Levinas uh, lived, uh, I mean, the majority of his life, most of his life in France, um, it's very interesting that the uh, French thinker be become, becomes really a major uh, reference in, in Israel. Yeah. And I think it's connected uh, with the fact that uh, uh, social justice is a very uh, central issue. I mean, in Judaism, uh, 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 traditional Judaism, uh, diaspora Judaism, between all these years of uh, exile, uh, 2000 years of exile, but it's in the Talmud. I mean, there is a doctrine of justice. And I, in Israel, there is, I, I'm not saying that it's, well, just, <laughs> we achieved justice. Justice is never achieved, it's a goal. So, uh, and what Levinas, what Levinas is writing on is, is uh, 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 I mean, the Israelis find a very strong connection with the problems that uh, comes their, with their concerns, uh, with their uh, worries, with their aspirations. And I think this, that's the reason, that's one of the reasons for uh, this uh, very extraordinary phenomenon we we are we witnessed and we 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 we're still witnessing. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost you could say that Levinas is um, uh, having a, a a a second wave of popularity today. First of all, it's very interesting to hear that he is. That was what I was asking myself: How well is he known in Israel? So. It's interesting to hear that there is a lar um, people are reading Levinas and from different spheres of society, from different political factions. And uh, my impression is too that young people are quite interested in Levinas because I hear references to Levinas quite often. 
people in their 20s. And because, you know, we, st we became uh, familiar with Levinas, I think, in the 1960s and, and 70s, and, and during that time when he was writing his major books. But now he's coming, there's sort of a new generation taking interest in him. And uh, is that sort of the same in Israel too? You have also young, not just old, but young as well, in reading about Levinas or interested in his philosophy? Yeah, it's a, it's a part, actually, it's a part of the phenomenon uh, that uh, and it, it's, uh, it was really from the start in, uh, um, in the beginning of, uh, of uh, two, two, uh, 2000 and I think 2001, uh, the first, uh, first book uh, was translated is uh, Talmudic Readings mm -hmm. uh, and it attracted uh, very much people. I mean, of course, people did, discovered very quickly that it's a <laughs> it's a philosophical book. Yes, it's a it's a, this Talmudic readings, this uh, Levinas's um, uh, commentaries on the Talmud. Mm -hmm. uh, Levinas is a philosopher, yeah. so you you it's uh, they discovered that they are so, that it's not so easy uh, to to understand. Uh, but at the same time, yes, many many uh, young people, and it's uh, it's it's really uh, it's really uh, great great to see it. I I I uh, I told I I I, uh, I was at the Hebrew University. Uh, I stood I um, yeah, for six years. Yes, it's especially. Uh, at uh, the time when uh, Levinas became so popular, and I could I could see it uh, very clearly with my students, and I must say that until now, uh, young people, uh, less young, young younger of course, mm -hmm. but w when when uh, I mean if I decide if, uh, to um, to talk about Levinas. Uh, I I get a great a great number <laughs> of people, especially with Zoom, of course, and uh, and so uh, yes, and I, I think it's very important because as as we know, uh, um, the this is uh, and in fact it's very Jewish to the idea of uh, transmission. Yeah, it's not only uh, for this generation for people who initiated the study in Levinas. Uh, on living us in Israel, or already like me, already uh, knew and read living us uh, uh, before they came to Israel. Uh, but of course, the key the key is uh, uh, new generations, and it's working very well uh, here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now now that we have everyone interested in Levin us and probably our listeners, maybe uh, maybe many of our listeners are asking, well, who is Emmanuel Levin us? What did he say? What did he write? So, let's talk about that a little bit now. What what is it? What is the innovation of Levin us, or what is the originality of Levin us? And he is important for Jewish thought, but he's not just a Jewish thinker. He's also important for 20th century philosophy. So maybe you can talk about that a little bit. The, uh, the importance of Levinas and what he has to say. Yes, of course. So Levinas is uh, known uh, like the philosopher of uh, the other. Uh, of course, it's not the, un the only, uh, ethics is not the, uh, the only subject Levinas dealt with, but of course it's a main one. And uh, so Levinas, uh, a Levinas's innovations are many of them. I will try to pick up uh, what is to me the more uh, striking. The first innovation, the very striking innovation is the way in which he really uh, sought all, all over again, what is uh, morality? And he, 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 do, he doesn't choose the word morality, so he's talking about ethics. So of course, talking about uh, moral values, uh, as it has a long history in the Western uh, culture. And the histor in history of philosophy, it, uh, it found many expressions uh, um, among the most famous uh, 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 representatives of the of, uh, philosophical tradition. But usually 
uh, and it's also a, co a common idea. When talking about uh, about uh, morality, one is uh, is um, of course thinking about uh, the sacrifices you must make in order to behave uh, uh, to behave in a moral way. Uh, the values uh, you 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 must strive for, and you must ma make efforts to to attain them and to practice them. But in many cases, uh, morality is, is thought as a self-perfecting, perf yeah? You're looking for uh, behaving, um, for example, in uh, being dis disinterested, uh, seeking for values, for, this, for justice, uh, for other values, for the sake of these values. Yeah? But at the end of the day, it's it's about your your personal uh, moral perfection, and even I would say uh, even if uh, morality is is uh, understood as prescribing to you a certain way to behave with the other, with the others, uh, with the neighbor, of course. Uh, I mean the the idea of of uh, uh, of your your own achievement remains very strong, and uh, and Levinas did something really um, really new. He he, um, he saw from the beginning, the very beginning, he saw it ethics as a relationship with the other, and as you know, as uh, total uh, dedication to the other, total commitment to the other. And it's about uh, being for the other. It doesn't mean that I would completely forget myself. It's not uh, self annihilation. You don't have to, to annihilate yourself in order to be for the other, uh, not at all. But, but that's the way you thought about ethics. And I think it's, uh, it's very inno innovative and also uh, inspiring. And it's also uh, one of the things that makes Levinas uh, difficult for even for people who have a philosophical knowledge and education, uh, because uh, the difficulty beside uh, the language, uh, the notions, is really that it goes against uh, the, the common stream, you know. He, he says thing, he's saying thing, things that disturb people, disturb uh, people, yeah. Because it's not, uh, I mean, philosophy, uh, of course, is it, it's, it's how philosophy should be, but he's talking about the most uh, uh, intimate things who are the most important for for a large number of, of people, yeah. Who are, and so. Not, not, I'm not talking, of course, only about philosophy. And I see another thing that, uh, for me, was very fascinating, is uh, the the way uh, he took, uh, he, he really uh, dealt and gave a great value to all sorts of uh, human concrete situations. Yes, is a phenomenologist. Uh, meaning is not something theoretical. It's something that that uh, comes uh, uh, comes uh, uh, or that express itself in um, in concrete uh, situations. But Levinas, from the very start, yeah, is talking about uh, uh, before the war, like about uh, what is shame, what is to be a shame, even about nausea. Yeah? After the war, it's about uh, insomnia. Is about uh, laziness. Is about of enjoying the world and of all the the good things that world world provides to to us. Is talking about I mean the different uh, figures of the other, the feminine, the relationship, the erotic relationship, as you would say, uh, the the child. Uh, what is uh, maternity? what is a paternity. And so he, all this subject, uh, when 
philosophers were talking about them because uh, most of them did not do that. So they, they were really in the margins, yeah? In the margins, they were considered like minor uh, concerns. And Levinas uh, really uh, put this, put, put this, uh, these very important issues in the very center of, uh, of philosophy and even beside philosophy of uh, human thinking, yes. And, uh, and, and this, this is, uh, I mean, when you read uh, this book, Totality and Infinity, uh, even if it's difficult, there, there are some uh, really thrilling uh, descriptions of, uh, of enjoying the world uh, and then how did the, does come that you discover the other and that you would become committed to him. Uh, and I find I always found it uh, very fascinating. Your explanation uh, is uh, really interesting. Uh, you made me aware of something that I hadn't <clears throat> noticed. Uh, just starting when you at the beginning when you said that most morality or like moral teaching, traditional moral teaching, is how to make my how to perfect myself, how I can become perfect myself. So I look. If you take Aristotle's ethics, Nicomachean ethics, or then later developed by Thomas Aquinas in uh, in medieval times, so it's true. The ethics of virtue is basically an ethics that how do, how do I make myself perfect? I mean, I can be then perfectly ethical even if there's no other people around me, uh, because it's it's working on yourself. But the interesting thing about Levinas is that he's taken ethics and he has turned it towards the other person. That my ethical um, development depends not, it's not like an exercise that I'm doing alone, but it depends on my, how I see the other and my relation to the other. And I suppose if I don't have this openness to the other, or if I do not receive the other, then I cannot like, uh, develop my own morality. So this is, uh, this is really interesting. I had not seen it in this light. Um, quite interesting, yeah. Another thing is that Levinas has made um, everyday life, like he's taken the aspects of everyday life and uh, made them important or made them a subject of philosophy. That's why I thought that maybe Levinas, well, I'm asking, do we call him a phenomenologist in that sense? Because that was sort of the project of phenomenology, I think, to look, um, <clears throat> but um, did the other phenomenologists look at everyday things as well, or it's more Levinas? Like, do we find that in Husserl or, or others, or this is more of an innovation, again, of Levinas to examine uh, everyday life? Yeah. Uh, the thing is that uh, Heidegger, uh, there is no ethics in, uh, in Heidegger, yeah. No I would say... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say even the contrary, uh, because for Heidegger, what is uh, achievement of life is the fact that uh, we are all meant from the very beginning uh, to, to die, and uh, death is not mm -hmm. uh, considered as, uh, as, um, as a failure or, <laughs> or an imperfection. Yeah, but on the contrary, and uh, of course, it's a very long story, but as a greatest achievement of uh, human life, because you're the only one who is dying. Yeah, mm -hmm. not only because uh, he would say that only man exists, and uh, I mean, animals say they don't deserve uh, the word exist, yeah, in uh, Heidegger, but, but because uh, he has this notion that uh, we are for, for death, we are, go, we are in, our, in, our, uh, in our being, I mean, the very structure of our being, uh, death is not something accidental, it comes from the uh, outside, it's some, something that would define, define, of course, I'm not talking uh, Heidegger's language, about being, being, uh, being a man, or uh, Dasein, as he would say, so, and, it's, and I say that because Levinas uh, is, a, is almost from the very uh, start of his philosophical journey. I mean, uh, in the 30s, 1930s, even if he was, he was one of the best commentators of, uh, of Heidegger, 
Mm. He, he became very critical and very quickly critical uh, to, to Heidegger. Uh, maybe uh, Heidegger's uh, commitment to Nazism uh, played a part, but mm. it was also a part of uh, his uh, Le Levinas's philosophical evolution. But um, I mean, Heidegger would say, uh, okay, uh, some people would say that, uh, and would also say that it's the greatest value that uh, man would be ready to give his own life to die, die, to die uh, mm -hmm. in this place or instead somebody else, as you say, see on the battlefield, for example. But uh, it does, uh, either there as a sort of uh, despise. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to, to, uh, uh, to, to this argument, because he would say it uh, at, the, at the end, uh, at the end, you will, you will not, uh, I mean, the, if you sacrifice your life for, this, for the life for the, for the other, at the end, the other would die. So uh, there is something like uh, meaningless uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in dying for the dying uh, in the place of the other, and so Levinas, uh, of course, reacted very strongly. I mean, be, because he's a, uh, because of of ethics of of, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the importance of ethics, and the other man, he reacted very strongly to this uh, to this mindset, which, uh, as we know, uh, unhappily. Uh, there is, they are very, uh, very uh, convinced, <laughs> or maybe sometimes fanatics, Heideggerians. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yes, but he, he said that there is a human possibility, in all, and it defines our humanity, our being human, to be, uh, to be, uh, uh, to be able to die for the other. He doesn't say that you must die; you must, uh, <laughs> you mm -hmm. must. Uh, I for the other, uh, yes, and this is uh, and this is something. I mean, he's not talking about dying in the in the literal sense, in the literal meaning. Uh, mm -hmm. He does not preach uh, for, uh, on behalf of uh, suicide, uh, but but um, but he would he would say that. Uh, uh, I mean, and and th th there is a very interesting uh, um, commentary, Levinas commentary on uh, Jacob, the meeting between Jacob and his uh, brother, Esau. So Esau, I say it in Hebrew, of course he did not come to <laughs> Jacob with very good intentions. Uh, he, he, uh, uh, they, 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 uh, he, he was convinced he had an army and he was convinced that he would uh, be able to, uh, to, uh, to um, eradicate, I mean, uh, all uh, Jacob and all his family, and so. Uh, but there is this beautiful uh, uh, verse that uh, that Levinas would explain in this way: uh, Jacob was afraid. Why? Because he was he was uh, afraid to be in this situation where he would be obliged to uh, to kill maybe uh, the other. Yeah. Because he has to protect his own family, but it, it's uh, and so Levinas say uh, it's not only a pragmatist attitude. Yeah, it's, it's this human ab ability, mm -hmm. or that to 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 be to to give priority to the life of the other uh, is, uh, to to your instead of giving priority to your own life. Yeah, we all know that we have only one life, yeah. So it's the most precious thing that we we have. Um, so uh, and uh, uh, we certainly was uh, as I did. Uh, they, they were really, uh, um, I must say, we have to to acknowledge that uh, it, they were very important uh, for Levinas because Levinas uh, studied with them and Levinas was. Uh, as it, uh, it, it translated a very important book by Husserl, uh, Meditation, uh, Cartesian Meditation, and he went to Feitburg in Germany to the university in order to study with Husserl and Heidegger. And he also 
played a major role in the diffusion, in the spreading of their thought in France. Uh, and, uh, and Husserl, uh, he does, he's talking about concrete things, but not on this subject I, men I mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the idea is not, is not really uh, to uh, speak about uh, the, the concrete, it's more to, um, to uncover the meanings that are that are uh, that, that are uh, that are encapsulated in in uh, uh, experiences that are our experiences as what is love. Yeah, Levinas wrote very something very beautiful in uh, in one of uh, maybe his first uh, writing an article he wrote uh, in 1929. He was uh, only. Uh, 23, yeah, he was a trans, at the age of 23. Uh, they, he said, uh, love is an intention of love. I mean, feelings, and he, he was also, uh, um, his, his idea was also to say why, why uh, what is uh, innovative in Husserl. So he said, Husserl considered that uh, not only rash, rational phenomenon, but feelings. Mm -hmm. There is an intention at work. Yeah, it's uh, and and love is an intention of loving. Yeah, of love. It's not. Uh, it's not only uh, rational or passion. Passion, you know, passion of or uh, some things that uh, would uh, make us uh, uh, really. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, going out of our safe uh, self because of ent enthusiasm. Yeah. So there, there is this rehabilitation of uh, feelings that is very important. And mm -hmm. I believe that uh, what Levinas took from, from Husserl, among many things, is to evaluate uh, these situations where, um, I mean, feelings, not as uh, in the irrational sense, but uh, in the, in the meaning of intentions, yeah, are involved. Mm -hmm. So, in like other love, way, it's talking mm -hmm. about love, about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it seems that uh, talking, going again back to Heidegger, it seems that he, perhaps Heidegger or much of German philosophy is fascinated with, I guess, with the natural world or with being with ontology, traditional ontology, the, 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 the strength of being nature, it's almost kind of pagan in a certain sense. And in Levinas, then uh, we, there's a desire to move away from that and say that truth is not found so much in this power of being, the power of, uh, of the natural world, but the truth is found in, in the relation to the other person, in, in human relations. And, ethics is in human relations. So, in other words, is this what uh, you mean by Levin, uh, paganism and non-paganism? I, I heard you give a talk a few weeks ago, so I'm just referring to that now. You were talking about, maybe you can say a few words about that. How? Yeah, uh, it's, it's sort of uh, the relationship uh, with nature by itself, yes. It's a certain way to uh, to relate to um, to um, to nature, uh, that becomes a sort of cult or you no know, adoration, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and to value the relationship uh, with nature. Uh, a, I mean, instead of evaluating the relationship with other men, yeah, for, mm -hmm. with the other. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, Levinas uh, is, is his first writings, and uh, also uh, uh, including um, a paper, uh, and a very important uh, article by Levinas, 1933, that you you discovered. He's the one that uh, discovered it, and uh, and uh, and it's a great uh, thing that you did. You translated it from Lithuanian to English, and then it was translated from Lithuanian to French, and. Uh, and Levinas um, there and in other, in other writings from really uh, uh, 1933, 34, and uh, until uh, the war, 
uh, he was already, uh, uh, he, he, he saw that uh, paganism is uh, a su substantial uh, part of, uh, of Hitlerism. As, yeah. mm -hmm. And so, and so, and not uh, not paganism. Uh, I mean, like uh, Greek paganism. You know, there are many things of uh, sorts of pag paganism, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, uh, uh, the way the way this uh, adoration of uh, of uh, the motherland, of the soil, uh, where uh, you. Uh, you, you, your, uh, your roots, yeah, you are rooted in mm -hmm. the soil, yeah, uh, leads, leads really to uh, making a distinction or contribute with racism, of course, and anti Semitism to make a difference between uh, people who are, uh, who have the right to, to be called men, like superior race, mm -hmm. of course. And people who, are, who are, does not deserve to to be called a man, men, so to belong to humanity, and uh, then it's possible to, of course, to to it's uh, you have to eradicate it then. So it started from from there. I mean, it started uh, um, uh, with this uh, this uh, traumatism yeah, of. Uh, of uh, the Hitlerism, uh, the access of Hitler to the power. Levinas uh, understood even before uh, 1933 that that's, uh, that uh, Hitler would become a, a, change, a chancellor, uh, and and then uh, he. It's true that it's a part of his uh, critique to to Heidegger. Um, maybe after more after the war, uh, when Heidegger is a whole part of his philosophy, what people call the second Heidegger, mm -hmm. that is not uh, really about uh, about the question of of being. Is uh, is really ab about? Uh, I mean, it has. Uh, I, I cannot. I, I would not uh, uh, go into the details yeah, because it's quite complicated. But that. Uh, uh, that a, a philosophy that entails uh, really uh, um, a substantial and um, uh, uh, relationship with the nature, yeah. exaltation of uh, of the, <laughs> the 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 famous painting by Van Gogh, yeah, the shoes mm -hmm. of the peasant yeah, right. with um, with uh, <laughs> the uh, that uh, uh, with uh, with his root. Uh, his roots uh, very deep into the uh, the maternal uh, land, yeah, and of course for Levinas, it's this is paganism. In, in fact, it's not about uh, uh, it's not about uh, uh, believing that there are many gods and and uh, and um, it's not about the cult. It's not uh, or, or religion. It's not about. Uh, how many gods there are? Maybe one one god. This is monotheism, and <laughs> and many gods of polytheism. So this is paganism. It's a certain way of being in the world and related to the world and related or not relating or not relating to to the fellow men mm -hmm. and women. Right. Um, do you think that today in today's culture uh, there's a very strong movement uh like environmental movement now no we are nobody is against that we're not against the environment and we all want fresh fresh air and clean water and so on that's but do you think that maybe there's um something of this paganism coming back by maybe sort of like an extreme interest in um the environment and sort of forgetting of ethics, forgetting of the other person, or is this, uh, this is just my imagination. Do you think there's some kind of tendency here or not? Uh, of course, if, if it's, it becomes uh, the priority. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, have a, we have a very, uh, uh, my ask, great philosopher, Jewish philosopher, uh, Hans Jonas, who is talking about being responsible for the nature, for the env environment. 
but it's being responsible towards the, the new generations, to the future generation. And then it's not uh, paganism at all. Mm -hmm. uh, pagan paganism appears when you when uh, one would uh, evaluate uh, uh, nature to the point that he would forget about uh, about uh, his, uh, human uh, uh, phenomena. Yeah? And human so phenomena. and so, but he, but when uh, when you're talking when you were talking. Uh, I was uh, realizing something that I, I felt. I have many friends who are involved in this question of environment. Uh, we're doing it for ourselves. Yeah? Of course, we would say we want to protect uh, environment because we want to protect uh, animals. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, protecting nature or uh, environment may be seen as a goal, a very uh, high goal, a valuable uh, goal. But we're doing it at the end of the day, we're doing it for ourselves. Because if we're not doing it, the, the, uh, maybe it would happen, uh, we would not be here, of course, for, to see it and uh, it would yeah. be better. But it, 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 it will end by, uh, by destroy, destroying nature that, uh, that we need. We need nature, we need fresh air, we yeah. need fresh water, clean water. Uh, otherwise, we cannot survive. So it's it's also uh, it's I mean it's not uh, you know idealistic and, dis and completely uh, disinterested uh, mm -hmm. um, relationship to or commitment to nature. Well, too the problem is that the environment. Like I know the context uh, here in Canada in my own country. Sometimes the question is you know the countries want to go to zero carbon emissions and so on. This is very, very expensive. There's, so there's a lot of money being put towards the environment. But then at the same time, there are poverty is growing and there's many homeless and children don't have enough, get proper nutrition and proper food to eat. So sometimes it seems to me that our whole budget is going to the environment. We're sort of forgetting about the people. So I don't know, uh, you know, this is just... If, if this could be seen in a larger sort of uh, context of a return of, of uh, Heide, like what we were talking about, the Heide, Heideggerian type of thought or a, a forgetting of the person, I don't know. So, uh, so maybe a balance has to be found and that's where Levinas can be an important philosopher. I think the, the thing is that uh, when you think about, uh, when one, one thinks about uh, what is uh, what is the definition of uh, of modern state? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking modern liberal state. Yeah, I'm not talking about, uh, of course, uh, totalitarianism. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, the, they are based. Our modern uh, uh, states are based on uh, the rights of men and mm -hmm. women. Yeah? Uh, equality of rights. But it does not automatically means uh, 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 equality uh, uh, regarding opportunities. Mm -hmm. Opportunities or, or equal opportunities for people to, uh, to, to live in a decent, even in a decent way. We are not talking about, uh, <laughs> about, uh, about uh, having, uh, you know, uh, very expensive um, uh, way of living. Yeah. And I mean, uh, there is something, and I, I would come back to Levinas and what he said about, even what he said about uh, the, the foundation of, uh, of the state of Israel in 1951. So the state was created in 1948. It was very, it was very close to the, to the creation of uh, the state of Israel. Um, he said that uh, uh, the state is not uh, uh, is not an ideal uh, by itself. I mean, achieving this great uh, thing of having, uh, 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 after all the, the, the tribulations and all the tragedies, uh, Jewish peoples lived in. Uh, in the history and of course the Shoah and the Holocaust. 
So it's not an end in, by itself. It should be a mean because having, uh, having a, a state, uh, the fact that Jews have a state, it should give us um, the means uh, to uh, achieve social justice. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that uh, the state of Israel is a just, uh, just state, you know, a state founded on justice, uh, and it's the only one in the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but it means that it is, uh, uh, it is our duties. It is our duties, first of all, as as a human being, and duties as living here on this uh, on this land, um, and and what means. Uh, jo social justice, you know, because it can mean it's a uh, term that you can, uh, I mean, you can give it all sorts of meanings. Um, it's really, uh, a, it's, also, it's really the, the struggle against poverty. Mm -hmm. So no, in Israel, it, it, well, no poverty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so so in Israel, well, we are not so we are not for some so, so all sorts of reasons that also uh, you describing describing what's what the situation in Canada and in Israel as other as other as uh, as uh, reasons like uh, we 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 are obliged to uh, to um, to dedicate a large part of the budget to uh, milita the military and to security. And uh, but I mean it's something that should remind uh, remain in our minds. Um, uh, so in Israel, that, that was uh, some years ago. Uh, that was what is what was called. I think it was a bit of exaggeration, but it was uh, the tenth revolution. What does it mean? It means that uh, the middle class <laughs> decided to have its rights. And so all along uh, very uh, central boulevard in uh, streets in uh, Tel Aviv, people were just living in tents, you know, it was their way to demonstrate. But it was a fight for the interested of the middle class, not for the lower, the lowest class in society. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, the ways, the, of course, there is a long way until the, uh, until the situation where we, we, we would uh, at least, uh, I mean, even getting close to, to this duty of uh, reducing the poverty. And if you're a Levinasian, you would also say, you are never done <laughs> with it. Uh, when, you, when you think that you, 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 you have, uh, you, you have uh, really, you have done all, all you have done, uh, you have observed, you, observe, you have observed all your, your duties. The, there is even more, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the more, the yeah. most you, you get close to the goal and the most it, it you, you, uh, it's, it's, um, you must to, to, to make uh, other efforts. Yes, it's an infinite, mm -hmm. uh, like an infinite uh, journey to the, towards the good, towards uh, mm -hmm. uh, justice. Well, this has been uh, really interesting. It's been uh, very inspiring listening to you. Um, Levinas, um, I really, after our conversation, I really want to go back and read Levinas. I know too that his biography was, his personal life was, was very difficult. And uh, he was, uh, he lost his family during the, um, it, to the Nazis during the Holocaust, if I'm not mistaken his uh, family that stayed behind in Lithuania. He himself was a prisoner of war. He was in the French army. He was a prisoner of war. He went through much pain and suffering. And still he has this uh, positive outlook on life. And still he has this hope and this, this desire to do good, to help, uh, to make life better for other people. And uh, this very insightful philosophy. So knowing these things about Levinas and knowing the beauty of his work, uh, I think then, you know, makes him a great philosopher of the, uh, a great philosopher of our time. And uh, you have brought up a lot of these points. And, uh, you know, so I want to say again, thank you very much. And this has been quite inspiring. And I think everyone who has heard this podcast is now going to be curious about Levinas and want to read 
to read his work. Uh, I know that I know that I did not say enough. Yeah, there are a lot more uh, to to yes. to say, but uh, but I I hope that uh, our uh, our listeners, people who would see uh, this uh, podcast, yeah. uh, that it would give them uh, uh, the desire to to read Levinas because uh, you, you cannot appreciate really appreciate. Uh, a philosopher and also uh, uh, to find in this philosopher what what is meaningful full for you yourself or your own life yeah. uh, until you read it by by yourself so true. i just want, want to warn listeners it's not uh, so always easy yeah levinas is not always easy but many philosophers aren't easy and it's uh, but it works it does work uh, the effort so thank you very much, Andrews and uh, Darius and uh, and all uh, everybody who would say see this uh, video. <laughs>